but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. Hey, don't you just love it when more assistant sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award-winning service that it's brings you play-by-play -play commentary, right live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com or call or text me at 973-713-5944. or carpenter, needing workers' compensation, general liability, or commercial auto insurance, Gladstone Coverage Group has you covered. Gladstone Coverage Group is a one-stop agency specializing in many types of insurance, including life, personal, business, and Medicare supplement insurance, as well as employee benefits, serving many communities throughout New Jersey. As an insurance partner protecting you and future generations, Contact Tyler Brinson at 908-698-0477 or by email at tylerb at gladstonecoverage.com and tell him Morris Sussex Sports sent you. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at Sussex... The goal, we reset, and TJ Santeta has it for the Vikings. Santeta... Brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeta, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit, the run will score. And Freshman, full oh, check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is gonna make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Olsen, Grosso for three, he got it! Uh -huh! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Morris Sussex Sports' presentation of this girls' basketball clash tonight between the Kittatinny Cougars at 9-2 and, and the visiting Hapak Kong Chiefs at 8-5. and five. I'm Ryan Sood, also glad to be with you here on this evening. Hope you all staying safe from the snow, and we hope you continue to stay safe from the snow come tomorrow. Some places around here getting around 6 to 8 inches of snow. But before all that goes down, we got this going down tonight. Kittatinny coming off of a loss to North Warren, 40 to 29 on uh, Wednesday night. And a Pat Kong played on Monday night, or on Tuesday night, I should say. Uh, and they lost to St. Elizabeth. So both teams 
uh, getting, tr trying to get back on track as we head into the 101 Sussex uh, tournament, which will start next week. Kittatinny uh, will be the sixth seed in that tournament, Hapak Kong the 15th seed. Huge storyline tonight, the biggest storyline is for Hapak Kong, Christy Brennan, who you may remember, scored her 1,000th point on February 27th of 2020 against Hackettstown, is now going for the all-time scoring record in a Pac Kong girls basketball history, trying to break the mark of 1688 tonight. She has 1666, so she needs 23 points to break it. That record just so happens to be held by her own head coach, Jamie Douglas, who is in her 17th season. And for Kid and Titty, they're trying to tune up as, um, as well as a Pat Kong, of course, uh, before going into the tournament. But Coach Josh Reed, who's in his fourth season with a 39 and 35 record, uh, says that the only times I talk about records is when I tell the team to be 1 and 0 today and then telling them what our record is after a loss. So he is a coach that takes it game by game. And the same can be said, of course, for, for Jamie Douglas. She knows that every game is 32 minutes and whatever happens, happens. And if they go out there and just play basketball and go all out for 33 minute, 32 minutes, they can compete with the best teams in the area. And that is nothing short of what they have against them tonight. Get a tenny nine and two, five and two in divisional play in their freedom division. And of course, a Pat Kong's division, the colonial division, they are six and one there. As the uh, clock on the scoreboard under a minute. So we should be able to get started in that amount of time. Before we get started though, we wanna make sure that you subscribe to the Morris Sussex Sports YouTube channel. Click the bell so you're alerted every time we go live. Also, COVID is rearing its ugly head again and limiting fans at some schools. So it's time to reserve Morris Sussex Sports to broadcast your favorite team, the Morris Sussex Sports way with play-by-play -play commentary, instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, and more. Reach out to George at morrissussexsports.com for all the details so we can broadcast your team. Speaking of which, does your business need exposure? Well, look no further than the hottest thing in more in, in more Sussex and Warren counties, Morris Sussex Sports. With over 4 million views a week, 80% of whom are 35 to 65 years of age, we don't think there is a better place to spend your marketing dollars. Plus, we have a super inexpensive program where you sponsor digital trading cards of athletes. We boost your own social posts and we get you on every one of our broadcasts. <laughs> And the PA announcer are going to get started with the starting lineups for both sides for tonight's matchup. Should be a great one. We're glad to have you here on more Sussex Sports. Ryan Sudall here at Kittatinny High School. Kittatinny facing Hapak Khan. All spectators should support your team in a positive, enthusiastic manner. Disruptive behavior or abusive language towards players, coaches, officials, or other spectators will not be tolerated. Any person violating these regulations will be escorted from the school premises. Thank you for your cooperation, and let's enjoy tonight's event. The Pack Mountain Chiefs are coached by Jamie Douglas. Our KT Cougars are coached by Josh Reed. He's assisted by Karen Sturdo. And now for tonight's starting lineups for the Pack on Chiefs. Number five, sophomore, Janie Henderson. Janie Henderson, 33 points on the year, leading the team in blocks. A great athlete, as described by Coach Jamie Douglas. Brittany Motika, 14 points on the year, four points a game, missed a lot of games due to quarantine, so she can produce. Chloe Omahoney, 47 points, third leading scorer on the team, second on the team in, thir in three point field goals. Cameron Cobb, second leading scorer on the team. And number 23, senior Christy Brennan. And there's Christy Brennan. 332 points on the year, 200 yeah, more than Cameron Cobb, who has 127. And remember, she needs 23 points, which is her number, coincidentally, to break the all time Hapak Kong scoring record held by her coach, Jamie Douglas. And now the starting lineups for Kittatinny. Taylor Howell, there, the freshman at guard. 50 points this year, five points a game. Number 21, senior Cassidy Mulroy. And there's Shania Fernandez there. You just see coming across, fist pumping the referees. Third Number on the team in scoring. Senior Michaela Caruso. Over there by the 
Scoring's table is Cassidy Mulroy, third leading and scorer on the team. Senior, and Maddie Beyer also there. Second on the team is scoring. Tied in points per game at 10 points a game. And of course, you just saw Michaela Caruso at starting lineups. for action. Just want to say folks there was a misnomer on the stats I said earlier. Uh, second on the uh, second on the team in uh, in points and tied with uh, 10 points a game. That's Michaela uh, Caruso. And I said it was Matty Byer. Matty Byer actually leads the team in points scored and tied with uh, tied at the top of points per game with 10 points a game. Michaela Caruso also leads the team in rebounds, 103 of them. And she's had two double doubles this year. One against Newton, 16 and 10, and one against Morris Tech, 21 and 19. Last game against North Warren, she had six points, nine rebounds, five assists, four steals. So she is a multifaceted talent, as is many players on this Kittitini team. A Kittitini team that is defensively sound, allowing 32 points per game for their opponents. And they are scoring 39 points a game. A Patcock scoring 46 points a game, 41 opponent points a game, and we are getting started here off the tip. It is Cassidy Mulroy with it for the Kittitini Cougars. Over to Howe. And here's, and here's Mulroy defended by Christy Brennan. Over to Matty Byer being defended. Mulroy. Being doubled by that zone defense that Hippack Hans employed. Now the corner three attempt is in and out. Rebound though by Caruso. Put back, no good as well. Rebound by Fernandez. He tries to put it up, tips it out, and it's going to be Christy Brennan with the ball for the Hippack Hans Chiefs in their first offensive possession. Bringing it up. Oh, a crafty pass over to the right wing where Cameron Cobb got it. She gives it up. Repeated passing here by Hippack Hans. With it now is Chloe O'Mahony. Cobb again, over to Brennan. No shot clock in high school. Off a screen from Cobb. Three from Brennan is off the mark. Rebound though, underneath. And that rebound was by Janie Henderson. They're being very patient with the ball. Brennan. Trying to get, oh what a pass inside by Brennan, inside to Cameron Cobb, who gets the first points of the game for either team, it's two nothing. A minute, a minute and a half has gone by in this first quarter. Four eight minute quarters in girls basketball. And this is Taylor Howe. Oh, it sent Christy Brennan for the spin cycle. No good, rebound though, put back by Michaela Caruso. Pass up the floor, that's Christy Brennan and no good off the pass from Chloe O'Mahony. But a rebound goes back out to the O'Mahony. Here's a three-pointer from Cobb. It's no good. Ball still bouncing around on the ground, and they're going to say it last went off of a, a Kittatinny player, much to the chagrin of the Kittatinny student section sitting next to us. But nonetheless, that's the call. Inbound coming from Cobb. Immediate, immediate shot attempt there by Cameron Cobb. But nothing going as it was blocked on the play by Taylor Ho. The freshman getting it on the defensive action. 
Both teams being very patient with the ball thus far. Here's a quick three, no good there by Cassidy Mulroy, and up the floor goes Brennan by herself, and poked out from behind. Once again, Taylor Ho getting in on the action. It'll be an inbound underneath the basket. Christy Brennan will take it. Taylor Ho, uh, Taylor Ho, two steals a game. So watch for her on the defensive end. Off a screen from Brennan. Inside goes Chloe on Mahoney. One up to shoot and a travel as the defense came quickly from Michaela Caruso. Bringing it up for the Cougars is Cassidy Mulroy. Mulroy on Brennan was anticipating Brennan to be on Bayer and vice versa, but that is not the case thus far. And here is Bayer, tried to get the pass over to Fernandez, but it instead goes over back to Mulroy, gets past Mahoney, and now the, the two-point attempt is no good underneath the basket. Great setup by O'Mahoney. But Caruso cannot get it, and O'Mahoney's pass that's intended for Cobb in the back corner goes, no, I'm sorry, that was intended for Janie Henderson. Goes out of bounds. 4.45 and counting, left to go in this first quarter. We are knotted at two. This girls basketball action live on more Sussex Sports, and there is a travel by Taylor Ho. Taylor Howe, sorry. Another turnover for Kittitini. Inbound being taken in by Cameron Cobb, and Christy Brennan has it in her hands. She needs 23 points tonight to break the all-time scoring record in a PacCon girls basketball history. And great on-ball defense as the ball goes the other way, and a foul is called. Cameron Cobb tried to get the ball away from Maddie Beyer after the great defense to get to the ball once again by Taylor Howe. What a job she's been doing thus far tonight. Bayer inside to Fernandez. Back out to Bayer, open three from the left wing. No good, off the back iron and out. And it will be Kittatini ball as, as Cameron Cobb and Brittany Matika couldn't agree on who's gonna get the rebound, so. It goes out, Matika defending the inbound. Here's Caruso, now Howe, corner three wide open. Maddie Byer is good! Five to two, Kittatini with four minutes to go. Halfway through the first quarter, that pass by Christy Brennan is intercepted by Fernandez. And they're actually gonna call that what would look like a three-point basket of two, so it's four to two, and that pass inside from Byer to Caruso leads to a foul. So that will send Caruso to the line for two free throw shots. And that foul before th that, that foul was uh, on Janie Henderson. And it goes off the mark. Two subs coming in for Hapatkong. This is Grace Dunn forward. Mahoney to Matika. Matika's pass got tipped right by the, by the mid court line. And that and Brennan had it for a second, but it was poked out by Maddie Byer. Now here's the matchup that we were anticipating. Oh, what moves by Christy Brennan as she goes inside and almost got it to go. Could not get the bounce. And a foul on Christy Brennan as she tried to wrestle the ball away from Michaela Caruso. Sub coming in for Hapatkong. Coming out is Brittany Matika. Coming in is Shauna O'Brien. Transfer from Lenape Valley. According to Coach Douglas, she has fit in quite nicely in the lineup. And bringing it up for, for Kittatinny is Maddie Beyer. Zone defense being empl em employed here by Hapatkong as Mulroy has it. Now to Caruso, swings it to Beyer, trying to get it past O'Brien. And there's a steal attempt by Cameron Cobb on Caruso, but she fouled her in the process. Brian. 
four fouls already in this quarter for Hapatcock. Mulroy to Taylor Howe. Across to Byer, directing traffic against the zone. Oh, what a quick tap pass from Caruso to Byer, who gets it to go. And a timeout called by Coach Douglas of Apatcom. Clock stops at 2.37 to go in the first quarter. Kittitzini trying to go to 10 and two on the year overall. Apatcom trying to go to nine and five. Kittitini's number one fan who <laughs> we love so much. Leading the cheers in the Kittitini student section. And they just shouted us out, is that more Sussex Sports is here so they need to get loud and, and that's what they're doing. 2.37 to go in the first quarter. Back on possession after the timeout. And Taylor Howe was down there defending Christy Brennan on the onset. And there's a screen on the floor by Shauna O'Brien. Christy Brennan trying to get past the double team from Fernandez and Bayer. Oh, what a move by Brennan as she goes inside, got fouled. She'll go to the line for two. And her first possible two points of the night. She needs 23 to break the all-time school scoring record. Came into this game with six, 1,666 points, needs 1,689. Brennan can't get the first to go. Get it to any student section making noise, and the second one drops. So it's now seven to three, two possession game. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the first quarter of action, live on more Sussex Sports. Kittatinny against the Pat Kong in girls basketball action. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Byer got the pass to Fernandez, who's quickly double teamed. Now Byer with two players in her face, puts it up and knocks it down. 10 to three. Oh, and a great defense there by Michaela Caruso as she intercepted the pass that was intended for Cameron Cobb. But it went out of bounds, so it'll be a Pat Kong ball still. Sean O'Brien taking the inbounds. O'Brien into Brennan, defended by Byer. Screen by O'Brien. Brennan pops a three, and she tried to, I think she got touched there, but referee didn't see it. And what a block underneath the basket by Caruso as, Cam, as Cameron Cobb tried to put it up. And after some wrestling, it is going to be, it is going to be Kittatinny ball. Nothing seems to be going right for Hapatkong so far in tonight's game. Defensively, Kittatinny has them figured out. And it all starts with how they've been pressing Christy Brennan thus far, who has 56% of the team's points in this season. Factor high score, 40 points this year, and the team had 50. That was the game against Morris Tech. That shot was off by Cassidy Mulroy. Rebound by Cobb, here comes Brennan. Trying to go all by herself to the basket. Great on ball defense by the freshman Taylor Howe. Now Brennan's double team as she's at the out of bounds line. And she threw it off of Maddie Byer, so it'll stay with the pack on. Good instincts there by Brennan. Clock stops at a minute and eight to go. And a sub now coming in for Kittatinny. Shania Fernandez coming out. And coming in is Hannah Olson, the sophomore. And that is going to be a reach-in foul on Bayer. Inbound up coming. Four fouls for Hapakong. And with that foul, it is now two for Kittatinny. Coming, coming off the floor now is Shauna O'Brien. Coming on. The starting, starting guard, Brittany Batika. With it now is Chloe O'Mahoney. Over to Cameron Cobb. And that pass intended for 
uh, intended for Grace Dunn underneath the basket is stolen away. And now Caruso backing up against Dunn and she puts it down off the glass. Great move underneath, it's a nine point lead for Kittatinny. O'Mahony bringing it up. Tried to throw one up and it was blocked away by Michaela Caruso. She had 31 blocks on the year coming into this game. Incredible def defense in the painted area throughout the whole season and tonight as there was a foul called on Kittatinny as uh, that was Motika trying to keep it in. And a sub now coming on for the Chiefs. Coming off is Grace Dunn. Coming on is Sam Van Beekham. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's Janie Henderson coming back on who started the game at forward, or one of the forwards. Brennan trying to get in off the screen from O'Mahony and she got poked in the eye. At least that's what it looks like. Referee did not call any contact. They're going to say he lost, she lost the ball on the way up, so it will be Kittatinny ball once again. Turnovers becoming a huge issue for Hapatkong in this first quarter. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kittatinny most likely going to hold on to it for the final shot. Already up nine, 12 to three. How? Off a screen, across there to Batty Byer, throws it up, can't get the bounce, and that'll go out of bounds. And with .5 tenths to go, it'll have to be a quick, path, a quick catch and shoot. They don't go for it, and it's 12 to three in favor of Kittatinny to end the first quarter. A defensive clinic being put on by the Cougars against the Chiefs. They're gonna take a timeout, and so will we. We'll be right back with live basketball action on Morris Sussex Sports. Don't go. Rich Latman, realtor with Keelan Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8483. Welcome back to Kittatinny Regional High School. Kittatinny against Hapat Kong in girls basketball action live on Morris Sussex Sports. Ryan Sudall here, glad to be with you tonight. A defensively dominant first quarter for the Cougars against the Chiefs. 12 to three is your score. Christy Brennan, who is the high scorer for, for a Pat Kong by a country mile, held to only one point. She needs 22 more to break the all-time scoring record for the Chiefs. And more amazing defense displayed on that possession by a Pat Kong, I'm sorry, by Kittatinny. A Pat Kong, yet another turnover. The defense in the paint has been the X factor so far for the Cougars. Headed by Michaela Caruso, who coming into tonight had 31 blocks. That's about twice as much as the next player. Oh, great design, pass inside. Oh, it's blocked by O'Mahony, but they're gonna call a foul. Michaela Caruso, good pass inside to a cutting Matty Byer. But, but O'Mahony had too much contact, so Byer will go to the line for two shots. Trying to make the score 14 to three. And the first one rims out. Maddie Byer leads the team in points. Also leads the team in assists with 47. And a timeout is called by Jamie Douglas before the second foul shot. As described by Coach Josh Reed, Maddie Byer, a coach on the floor like he's never had before and arguably the best defender in Sussex County. When she is on, she is an engine for the team, he said. 
and she has been on so far tonight, the team's high score. And a couple of fun facts about her that was found via uh, the athletic director Tom Va Todd Van Orden's Twitter page comes in handy. Her favorite movie is Up, and her favorite food is cream of potato soup. Do with that what you will. So second foul shot coming up from Maddie Beyer, trying to make it 13 to three. 35 seconds of action have gone by in this second quarter of action for eight minute quarters in girls basketball, high school girls basketball at least. And Beyer nails that one, nothing but net. 13 to three, Kittatinny leads. Here's Brennan trying to cut to the basket, and a foul. And they're going to, I believe, call that, I'm not sure if they're going to call that foul on the floor, and they do, so it'll be an inbound coming up from Brittany Matika. Matika into Cobb, back out to Brennan near the midcourt line, barely keeps it in, but Breyer pressing. Brennan over to O'Mahony. O'Mahony pivoting against Taylor Howe, who's doing incredible defense and a travel call. <laughs> Veteran defending skills for a freshman, incredible to watch. Up comes Mulroy, defended by Brennan. Kicks it to Byer, and she comes in near the elbow to nail the shot. It is 15 to three. O'Mahony bringing it up. And it was almost stolen by Byer, but she gets back to it. Now Matika has it. Defended well here by Hannah Olsen. And she throws the ball off of Olsen to keep it in the Pack Hawks possession. And now a sub coming on for the Chiefs. Coming off is Coley O'Mahony. Coming on, Shauna O'Brien. Had some action earlier. Inbounding it will be Christy Brennan. Overhead pass to Shauna O'Brien. O'Brien met defensive resistance, but she had to give up a pass to Christy Brennan, which she gets to. Brennan off the screen from Cobb, can't get it to go. Underneath the basket, a travel called on Hannah, on Hannah Olsen, yes. So it will be a Pat Kong ball once again. Quick bounce pass into Cameron Cobb, stolen away. And a double dribble called on Hannah Olsen. It was redemption for Hannah Olsen as she was the one who poked it away to create the possession, but in the process she double dribbled. So once again, inbound upcoming for Hapakong from Brittany Matika into Cameron Cobb. Wanted to go baseline, but feigned it. Now Matika has it in the corner. Out to Sean O'Brien. Good passing here. Henderson has it now. And here's a three-pointer. It is good. Brittany Matika, first points from range for Hapak Kong, cuts it to a nine point lead, under six minutes to go in the half. Here's Cassidy Mulroy. Described by her coach as a die hard baller. And inside to another die hard baller, great pass from Maddie Byer into the freshman Taylor Howe. And now Brennan, up the floor she goes, all by herself, coast to coast, and gets the point to go. She now has three on the night, needs 20 more to break the all-time scoring record for a Pac Kong High School. Maddie Byer now going all by herself. She tried to put an off-balance layup in, but no go, and an off-ball foul. So inbound coming up from Maddie Byer. Oh, what a pass inside, and Michaela Caruso could not get a handle on it. It was well placed, but just a little bit out of a little bit out of her range. So inbound coming from Brittany Matika, and we have a sub coming in. It is uh, Fernandez coming in for Brown. I'm sorry for Olson. And coming out of the game is uh, Jamie Henders uh, Janie Henderson from Pat Kong. Coming in was Shauna O'Brien. Here's another three-pointer. No good off the glass. Matika tried to go two in a row there. Could not get it to go. Under five minutes to go in the half. Fernandez 
from inside the three-point line, off the side of the iron, no good. But Michaela Caruso got the rebound, kicked it out to Mulroy, and she can't get it to go from the right wing either. Brennan, again, going all by herself, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Taylor Howe. And referees conversing. And that will... It will not put them in the bonus. One more foul and they'll be in the bonus. That is their fifth foul. So another inbound. Matika as a standard taking the inbound from underneath the basket. J.B. Douglas yelling directions from the sideline. Pass from Matika into Cobb. Well defended by Howe. Here's O'Mahony. Again, a three-pointer attempted. No good by Matika. And Christy Brennan tried to corral it as it rolled towards the Kittatinny bench. But she could not catch up. Kittatinny ball once again. Coming up on the halfway point to go here in the second quarter. Maddie Beyer. Can't get it to go. That would have made it a 12-point game. And the rebound there by Shauna O'Brien. Bringing it up the floor is Chloe O'Mahony. O'Mahony, another three-point attempt. And again a miss by Brittany Matika. And a block underneath on the putback attempt. Michaela Caruso blocks Shauna O'Brien. And a foul was called as well. That will send, I believe, Cassidy Mulroy to the line for two shots. This kid at Tinney defense just as good as advertised, and that's why they're 9-2. and two. Coach Reed will tell you, the improved defense from last, last year's shortened season is why they are in the position that they are in. And Mulroy, it's a one and one, and she converts it. Second one off the rim and down. Here's Cobb. Kicks it back to Chloe O'Mahony. To the corner. Quick three is off the right iron and no good, but a rebound underneath by Cameron Cobb. She can't put it back down. Now Shauna O'Brien can't put that one down either. And a foul on the floor as uh, Hapakong tried to wrestle the ball away from Caruso. Oh, actually, no. The, the reception from the Kittatinny student section was inaccurate. It was a foul on Kittatinny. Coming off the floor is Maddie Byer. First time we've seen her come off. And coming back on is Hannah Olson for Kittatinny. 340 and counting to go here in, sec in the second half. Oh, what moves here. Oh, and a block by Hannah Olsen. Christy Brennan tried to go baseline in a reverse layup, but Olsen said, uh-uh. Here's a three. Taylor Howe can't get it to go from the left wing. Rebound underneath, though, by Olsen, but corralled there by Cameron Cobb. Bringing it up is O'Mahony for, for a pack con. Matika, she's been cold from three since making her first. Now here goes Brennan, weaving her way through, and... A foul is called as she tried to make her way in. So that will put her at the line for two shots, trying to make it five points on the night so far. She's going to need a hot scoring second half in order to reach that record. Needs 18 more points. That is if she makes these two free throws. And she got the front end of the one and one. Got it. So that's uh, five points for Christy Brennan so far. The Pack on still in this game, only down eight. Coming up on three minutes to go here in the half. And Mulroy went all the way to the basket, tried to Euro step, but couldn't get it to go. And a foul called underneath the basket. That'll be on Caruso. Two shots coming up at the line, I believe. Yep, one and one. And the player that will be. Uh, 
that will be taking the shots is Cameron Cobb. Trying to make it a six point game. The score doesn't tell the whole story. Kittitsini has been dominating this game on all facets. But a pack on still hanging in there. Could be a six point game by the end of this foul trip. She misses the front end of the, end of the one and one, so wipe that out. Here comes Taylor Howe. Taylor Howe, quick pop from beyond the free throw line. No good, rebound by Shania Fernandez. Fernandez to the elbow, and it's good from Michaela Caruso. 10 point lead. Here goes Brennan, now from the right elbow. Brennan can't get it to go off the front iron. And she really wants to break that record. She wants everybody to see it. And now Fernandez, wide open, mid-range is good. When it rains, it pours. And it is a monsoon right now. And the fans are arguing that Chloe O'Mahony uh, should have been called for a foul there on what looked to be a clean screen on Taylor Howe. She did fall down though. Oh my gosh, this double team here on Christy Brennan. Incredible as it was near the out of bounds line. She kicks it out to, to Shauna O'Brien. Now to Cobb, now to O'Mahony. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the half. Cameron Cobb from inside the painted area, no good. Rebound by Shauna O'Brien. Possession arrow goes to Kittatiti. Sub here for Hapakong. Coming on is Janie Hernandez, coming off Brittany Matika. Minute 57 to go, 22 to 10. Kittatinny leads. Only five points for Christy Brennan, who's defending Mulroy right now. She averaged 26 points a game coming into tonight. So an incredible job by Kittatinny, and an incredible job to get inside the lane by Shania Fernandez. He scored the last four points for the Cougars as they are now up 14. And Brandon, Kittatini's number one fan, waving his towel in support. Under 90 seconds to go. Inside goes Brennan, and she was blocked underneath by Michaela Caruso. Up the floor, Taylor Howe can't get it to go though. Rebound by Hannah Olsen. Still wrestling with the ball, is now up the floor they go. It's an even break to the, to the hoop. Brennan can't get it to go. Brennan's having a lot of trouble getting it to go. Now a minute to go in the half. Twenty-four to ten. Nia Fernandez had an open look up at three, decided not to take it. Oh, and Mulroy fakes up Brennan as she goes to the hoop and puts the floater in off the glass. A sixteen-point lead for Kittatinny. Twenty-six to ten. This place is going crazy right now. The nightcap of basketball action here tonight. And a block on the three-pointer by Taylor Howe. It was attempted by Shauna O'Brien. They wrestle on the ground, and a foul is called on the ground. And the foul will be on Kittatinny. Taking the foul shots will be Cameron Cobb, trying to make this a 14-point lead with 26.2 seconds to go in the first half. Front end of the one and one is no good. Rebound by Caruso. What a job she's been doing in the paint tonight. And physicality to boot to get that one up to Taylor Howe. They're going to hold on to it for the final shot. 14 seconds to go. Fernandez defended there and lost the ball momentarily. And a foul called on Shauna O'Brien as she tried to go retrieve the ball. So Fernandez will go to the line. And they are still in the bonus, so a one and one. And ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news for all you football fans out there. The New York Giants have just hired Bills offensive coordinator Brian Dable as their head coach. And one and one is no good, but a rebound by Caruso, and she got fouled as she went up for her shot. Two more at the line coming up for Kittatini. Ninth foul for a Pat Kong. 
Nine fouls either side in this half. Clock stopped at 6.3 to go. Subs coming on for a pack uh, for a pack hung in the final moments of this half, and uh, that was a Sean O'Brien coming off, and Caruso second free throw is good. High arcing works every time for her. Now with five seconds to go, Christy Brennan bringing it up the court by herself. Long three pointer, no good, and that will bring us to the end of the first half. An incredible display of defense. That is the story of this first half for Kittatinny, who is beating Hapakong 28 to 10. And perhaps the biggest story of them all, Christy Brennan, who came into tonight for Hapakong, scoring 26 points per game, has been relegated to only five in the first half. So she's on pace right now for 10. Incredible stuff that we're seeing here tonight. That's gonna take us to halftime. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back with second half action live on more Sussex Sports. Experience. The STEM industry is constantly evolving, so join this competitive industry and advance your STEM education today. Pursue your degree at Sussex County Community College by visiting sussex.edu. Out of your system, check this out. Like the rest of your neighbors, you want your home to be as comfortable and inviting as possible. It's no surprise with the winter storms around here. The demand for system repairs are way up, which means waiting around for a while for a technician to show up and having to be stuck feeling uncomfortable for a long time, which is why at ICS, we make sure to service your home quickly and efficiently so you can get back to feeling warm and comfortable again. So if you don't want to spend your winter freezing your butt off, visit our website, icshvac.com. If your system is older than 10 years, you need to see this. Chances are your home is probably not heating up like it used to. Which begs the question, are you just waiting for your system to fail on you? It's no surprise with the winter storms around here. The demand for system repairs are way up, which means paying way more of your hard earned dollars to have your system serviced. Which is why at ICS, we make sure to service your home quickly and efficiently. So you can get back to enjoying your home again. You've got my promise. So if you don't want to spend your winter freezing your butt off, visit our website, icshvac.com. Don't give up your dreams of a great education. At Sussex County Community College, you'll find the tuition is affordable and faculty is focused on your success. Outstanding academics, personal attention, close to home, just a few of many reasons students choose Sussex. Visit sussex.edu to find out more. Have you ever needed a day to relax during these stressful times? Well, then look no further than modern acupuncture. Modern acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. Hey, don't you just love it when more assistant sports broadcast your games? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award winning service that brings you play by play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. 
Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Essex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. or carpenter, needing workers' compensation, general liability, or commercial auto insurance, Gladstone Coverage Group has you covered. Gladstone Coverage Group is a one-stop agency specializing in many types of insurance, including life, personal, business, and Medicare supplement insurance, as well as employee benefits, serving many communities throughout New Jersey. As an insurance partner protecting you and future generations, Contact Tyler Brinson at 908-698-0477 or by email at tylerb at gladstonecoverage.com and tell him Morris Sussex Sports sent you. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. I've worked with many mortgage companies over the years, from the big banks where I thought I could get the best, most competitive rate, to the small guys where I thought I'd get more personalized service. And I never thought I could have it both, until I met Family First. Family First gave me the most competitive rates in the market with unmatched service. Their team is incredible. They were always at arm's reach, ready to answer my questions, 
help me weigh different loan options, and work through some of the most challenging closing situations and timelines. I have to say without a doubt, Family First is the best in the business, and I strongly recommend them if you're looking to finance or refinance your home. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or a refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda at loandepot.com. Welcome back to Kittatinny High School. 20 seconds to go on the clock to get started for the second half. A Pat Kong just got in here. And you would assume that they got a talking to, sternly I might add, from their head coach, Jamie Douglas. After giving up 28 points in the first half, 28 to 10 is your score. Kittatinny leading a Pat Kong after a defensively dominant display from all cylinders by Kittatinny in that first half. Michaela Caruso, countless blocks. Taylor Howe, the freshman, incredible on-ball defense with multiple steals. <laughs> Hannah Olsen off the bench also contributing. And most significantly of, of them all, Christy Brennan, who is averaging 26 points a game coming into tonight, only five points in the first half. She needs 23 tonight to break the scoring record all time at a Kong High School. She needs to score 18 in this half alone just to do it. Lockdown defense. And she goes inside, does Brennan, and she was well defended by Caruso. Now coming up the floor of the Cougar. Oh, what a pass inside. Maddie Byer to Fernandez for the two points. Coach Josh Reed said to watch out for those incredible passes in transition by Bayer, and that was one of them. 20 point lead now. William Mahoney over to Christy Brennan, defended by Cassidy Mulroy. Now to Brittany Matika. Frequent passing here by a Pakong, and that pass attempt by Janie Henderson is picked off. It is Michaela Caruso there on the steal. Now Maddie Bayer, another great pass in transition to the three point line, no good. Tip back out. Taylor Howe's second attempt is no good as well. Brennan, every matchup that she's been faced with tonight has been a formidable one, whether it's Taylor Howe, Cassidy Mulroy, Maddie Byer, all of them have had her, or had her on lockdown tonight. And that pass attempt intended for Motika from Janie Henderson was tipped out of bounds by Maddie Byer. Possession stays with the pack on. Getting ready to come in for the Chiefs is Shauna O'Brien. Brennan, you see her wanting to cut, but she just can't. She sees everything going on, and that's gonna be a reach and foul called on Taylor Howe, as she tried to rip it out of her hands. So, Brennan will now take the inbound from right in front of us here. Bounces it in to Chloe O'Mahoney. Motika, and the ball was tipped away. Taylor Howe on the steal by herself, being chased by Christy Brennan. Got it, and a foul. And the foul was actually called from behind on number 11, Brittany Motika. So now Taylor Howe at the line, trying to complete the end one. Yeah. 
and it rolls in. 5-0 run to begin this second half, 33-10, six minutes to go in the third quarter. Oh, Mahoney over to Sean O'Brien, pass inside intended for Cameron Cobb, was picked off, or, or tipped I should say. And now Brennan against Mulroy. Long range three from Brennan is no good. Kittatinny fans thinking that, that that little contact by Cameron Cobb should be called as a foul, it was not. Now here's a three pointer, no good by Maddie Byer, and a foul underneath the basket once again. That's, a, that's been happening a lot to the Chiefs tonight. Fouling under the basket as they try to wrestle rebounds away. Matty Byer will take the inbound for the Cougars. Quick three-pointer off the inbound by Cassidy Mulroy is no good. It goes over the basket. And it will be a Pat Kong ball. Talking to Josh Reed. Just yesterday afternoon, he said that one of the lowest points in his coaching career was when Christy Brennan scored 36 on his Kittatinny team. Tonight, she only has five. And here she is with the ball. Every single defensive player is looking at Christy Brennan in the eyes, not at the ball. They're trying to rattle her. So far, it seems to be working. Sean O'Brien at the foul line, and they call it travel. She's pivoted one too many times. Maddie Byer bringing it up the floor, rocking the multiple colored shoes, liking the style. Oh, what a pass inside to Michaela Caruso. Can't get it to go, got her own rebound though, and it was tried to, attempted to be wrestled away, I believe by Christy Brennan, but they call a foul. And, uh, and that will be the call. I see, oh no, on 13, I apologize. So that would be Grace Dunn on the foul. Looks like Brennan got in there. And Caruso misses the first. Second one is good. I believe the Pecon fans were trying to use whale noises as a, as a distraction piece. Never, never heard that one used before. Here's Brennan, and she was fouled as she tried to drive to the basket. And that is the one of the biggest hallmarks of her game is getting to the line consistently and drawing contact. In the game against Sussex Tech in mid-January, she had 12 trips to the foul line. And the inbound into Brennan. Oh, she gets around both defenders under the basket. It was a great look, but couldn't get it to go. Rebounded, though, underneath. The putback attempt is no good there by Grace Dunn. Another attempt missed. Brennan got it back though, loses it momentarily, gets back to it, and the offense resets. Incredible stuff. And a steal by Caruso. Off the pass from Mahoney, from all Mahoney. Kittatinny once again back on offense. Cassidy Mulroy all by herself, can't get it to go. Got wedged in between the basket and the, and, and the backboard. Coming up on the halfway point through the third quarter, Christy Brennan, no points thus far, and she may have a chance to add two more. She goes to the line for two shots off a foul by, by Caruso. Trying to get to seven points. Makes the first, nothing but net. Sub coming on for Kittatinny. Hannah Olsen replacing Shania Fernandez. One of the senior captains. Got the second one to go. So she now has seven points on the night. More than half, as is standard. On the, on the, on the year, she has 56% of the team's points overall. Here's Cassidy Mulroy against Christy Brennan. Tried to do a couple head fakes, but it did not work. And Hannah Olsen trying to go baseline, and that shot goes way out of the way. 
Chloe O'Mahony brings it up the floor. Byer with good on ball defense there, but it did not work. Here's a three pointer from Motika off the left side of the iron and no good. Rebound by Olsen, and the ball was thrown off of Christy Brennan. Possession stays with Kittatinny. Brandon Board, the number one fan of Kittatinny, saying, feed me more. And by the way things are going tonight, he may get more. And underneath the basket, it doesn't come there as Michaela Caruso's off balance layup went off the backboard and nothing else. Brennan up the floor. Oh, what a block underneath by Caruso, but getting the put back there is Janie Henderson. So it's now 34 to 14. Flyer to Mulroy on the right wing. And now a three-pointer attempt by Caruso at the top, off the front iron and out, but it bounces right back to her. She goes inside, try to put it off the glass, it rolls out. Ball is still loose and saved there by Janie Henderson for Hapaka. Matika, uh, back to O'Mahony. And a timeout called by Coach Jamie Douglas of the pack on. Clock stops at 2.23. And remember, now the commentary does not end with the end of this game. The commentary continues after the game. If you want to catch some, come some of the highlights from tonight's game or even from last week, tune in to the wrap-up report. The show features top plays and athletes, as well as upcoming previews of the teams to watch out for that weekend. You can check out the local celebrities Thursdays at 6 p.m. right here on the Morris Sussex Sports YouTube channel, The Wrap Up Report. And make sure you subscribe to the Morris Sussex Sports YouTube channel and click the bell so you are alerted every single time we go live. Also, COVID unfortunately is rearing its ugly head again and limiting fans at sporting events, so it's time to reserve Morris Sussex Sports to broadcast your favorite team, the Morris Sussex Sports way, with play-by-play -play commentary, instant replays, cool cinematic, gra cinematic graphics, and more. Reach out to George at morrissussexsports.com for all the details so we can broadcast your team. And coming out of the timeout here, Kittatinny first. They have less to talk about, certainly, as they are up by 20 points, 34 to 14 over a Pat Kong. 2.23 to go here in the third quarter. Glad to be with you on this Friday evening, snowy Friday evening. I assume it's snowing outside, should be starting. Some areas around us are scheduled to get six upwards of eight inches of snow. So make sure you guys are, are uh, staying safe on the roads tomorrow if you must go out. Inbound out of the timeout right in front of us, coming from Brittany Motika into Christy Brennan. And O'Mahoney's shot was blocked, but it goes right underneath the basket. And still, you know, Pat Conk can't get anything done. That time it was, it was done on the miss. Oh, and a great pass up the floor goes nowhere as it's another, another turnover for either side. Oh, Brennan all the way to the basket, another block. Insane, insane from Michaela Caruso tonight. Averaging five blocks a game, she has no doubt eclipsed that mark. Had eight blocks against St. Elizabeth. She's getting close to that. Inbound from Christy Brennan to, Bren uh, to Brittany Matika in the corner. No good. And now another three-pointer. And no good again. No rim contact on either of those three-point attempts. That last one by Chloe O'Mahony. A minute 40 to go. Oh, what a pass inside to Michaela Caruso. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Hannah Olsen. Bounces out. And it's Chloe O'Mahony bringing it up. Far side. O'Mahony all the way to the basket. Another block. Unbelievable stuff from Michaela Caruso. It seems like she gets a block on every possession. And when she's on, she's an engine, according to Coach Josh Reed. And she is a locomotive tonight. And there's another steal. Cassidy Mulroy in on it. Taylor Howe, three pointer, no, off the right side and out. Rebound by Brittany Matika. Christy Brennan, double teamed by Byer and Howe. Coming up on a minute to go here in the third quarter. Only four points in this quarter for 
of Pat Kong, five for Kittatinny. So defensive quarter, well done for both teams. And that pass attempt inside, a rocket by O'Mahony is intercepted by Bayer. Bayer spins in the lane and puts it up for the body honor. Kittatinny is playing simply the perfect game. O'Mahony, bounce pass underneath that one stolen. A risky pass. And that pass up the floor to Bayer. Back to Bayer from Mulroy. And she got it. The last five points have been scored by Maddie Bayer. It's 39 to 14. Motika again. A steal by Caruso. Mulroy open. Three pointer. No. And they let it go out of bounds. It'll be Hapakong ball, and that's with five tenths of a second to go here in the third quarter. So, uh, and actually, uh, they're going to say it went off of a Hapakong player. So, Byer will take the inbound. It's got to be a tip, and it is into Michaela Caruso. And will they say it counted? Yes, they say she got it off in time. So, a buzzer beater to end the third quarter. 41 to 14, Kittatinny dominating a Pat Kong thus far. And feed me more, says Brandon Bort. As Josh Reed, of the head coach of Kittatinny, confirms that that basket went in. This is just a joy to watch if you are a basketball fan because the way that Kittatinny has managed this game thus far is nothing short of expertise. And we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back for fourth quarter action right after this break. More Sussex Sports. Do not go anywhere. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car, kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or a refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda. Welcome back to Kittatinny High School. Fourth quarter starting here, Kittatinny with a lead by 27 points, 41 to 14 over her Pat Con. Christy Brennan, one of the leading scorers in all of New Jersey period, 26 points a game, was on pace to break the scoring record tonight if she scored just 23 points below her average. She's only, excuse me, she's only scored seven. Here's a wide open three. Michaela Caruso, the best defender tonight. Multiple blocks, coming close to her high on the season, certainly. Just knocks down that three-pointer, her first of the game. It's a 30-point lead for Kittatinny. Brennan defended by Taylor Howe, and what a job she's been doing as well. The freshman with veteran-like defensive skills thus far. And they're doing a great job of forcing the ball away from Christy Brennan, as now there's a wrestle for the ball, and a jump ball called. Possession arrow will go to a Patcon. Brennan off the screen from Cameron Cobb. It's blocked away by Michaela Caruso. Again. How many times has she gotten a block? How many times has she blocked Christy Brennan tonight? And they're going to call a reach in foul there on Cassidy Mulroy. And the victim of the foul was Chloe O'Mahony, so she will take the inbound. 6.48 to go here in the game. And I feel like I can say that confidently. Shauna O'Brien. O'Brien gets the bounce pass in. It's stolen away by Hannah Olsen. And a foul call. No jump ball there. Shania Fernandez will take the inbound. Into Cassidy Mulroy.
And a foul called as Moore went up for the shot. Two shots coming up at the line. And the foul is on. That will be on Christy Brennan. That is her second foul tonight. Just want to point out, get five timeouts in the game. Kittatinny's used none of them. Apakong's used three. And there's another foul where Shania Fernandez went up for her shot in the lane. And that foul is going to be on Grace Dunn, her first foul tonight. And got it. Fernandez off. Here come the Chiefs. Far side at Shauna O'Brien all by herself. Blocked away. Oh, ball. Michaela Caruso. Kittatinny fan section saying she owns the pain, and it's hard to deny that. Trying to go baseline here. The shot no good by Grace Dunn. Rebound by Cameron Cobb, and she puts it back in. That is only the sixth point of this half for Hapakong. Kittatinny has scored 17. The score was 28 to 10 at halftime. And it is now a 29 point lead, 45 to 16, under six minutes to go in the game. Kittatinny trying to show the coaches who voted them the sixth seed in the HWS tournament, which starts next week, that they were wrong. And what a play there. Michaela Caruso catches a cutting Maddie Byer to add to her scoring total tonight. She's the lead scorer for the team. And an attempt to poke it out there uh, from, from Christy Brennan went out of bounds. So Brennan will now take the inbound from under the basket. Over the head pass from Brennan to the top of the key. That ball is tipped away by Maddie Byer. Two number 22 is going out. It's on Mahoney and Byer. Brennan trying to go baseline. And they're going to call. I believe that was a, I don't know if it was a charge or a travel, one of the two. Either way, a turnover for Hapakog. Hapakog just can't seem to get anything going. And they scored the first two points of the game too. Underneath, Michaela Caruso can't get it to go. Looks like she tried to draw contact there as well. Five minutes to go in the game, 47 to 16. Kittatinny is manhandling Kittatinny. I'm sorry, manhandling the Pat Kong is Michaela Caruso with an athletic steal as she went out of bounds. Fans wanted her to shoot. She's one for one tonight, of course. Mulroy di uh, directing traffic. Oh, and she didn't shoot. Fans wanted her to shoot. She had a wide open look, but I think they're just trying to run as much clock as they can at this point. Oh, a, try, a, a great attempt at a pass there by Hannah Olsen, but it goes nowhere. Here's Cameron Cobb off a pass, and, a good, and it is good in the lane. Assist going to Chloe O'Mahoney. Here's Caruso, defended by Grace Dunn. And that one is going to be stolen away, picked up by Christy Brennan. Brennan going to pull up from way deep, and it's good off the backboard. And she's got 10. She's going to need 13 points in the last three minutes and three, three and a half minutes to break the record. But with the way that Kittatinny is playing this game, she's not going to get a chance at many shots at all, regardless if all of them went in. She probably wouldn't break the record. They are holding onto this ball as long as they can. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. They're up 26. Three-pointer coming from Cassidy Mulroy. And it's a formality at this point. 
Kittatinny putting a 50 piece on the Hapakon Chiefs. Nothing but net from the left wing by Cassidy Mulroy. And warm the bus. This is the chant coming from the Kittatinny fans section. It's another steal from Michaela Caruso. Bounce pass underneath. Repeated bounce passes between Bayer and Mulroy. Goes out of bounds. Kittatinny will keep it as Cameron Cobb tipped it out of bounds. Coming on for Hapakon is Batika. And also coming off is Grace Dunn. Replacing them is, uh, is, uh, is Henderson. And underneath the basket, right off the inbound, it is Caruso. 31 point lead, 2.45 to go. I think they're just gonna try to feed, feed her the ball at this point, Christie, to try to get some points. No, she looks to pass that one out. And behind her, Christy Brennan was wide open, didn't see her. Fans were yelling for her to get the ball, and now Brennan has it again against Mulroy. Brennan pops a three, no good. Rebound, though, by Henderson. Henderson puts it up a mid-range, and she gets it off a high arcing shot of just inside 10 feet. And a timeout called. That is the first timeout called in this game by Josh Reed and Kittatinny. And it is just, just over two minutes to go in the game. I mean, this, this game could be compared almost to the Buffalo Bills, what they did against the New England Patriots in the first round of the playoffs a couple weeks ago. Seven drives, seven touchdowns. The only drive they didn't score was the one where they knelt on the ball. That is the vibe coming from this Kittatinny Cougar squad here tonight against the Pat Kong. And Kittatinny was given the sixth seed in the 100 and Warren Sussex tournament. And with the Pat Kong having the success that they have had, arguably the best team they've, they've had at least in Jamie Douglas's 17 year t tenure, and she'll tell you, they're looking like they were shortchanged with that number. Speaking of which, uh, Kittatinny will play the winner of Belvedere and Sussex Tech in the first round on February 6th. And coming up on Monday will be the preliminary round for Hapak Kong as the 15th seed. They will face off against the 16th seed, Hackettstown. So 2.09 to go here. And tip there by Cameron Cobb. So again, another inbound coming. Doing Heavy defense here, they don't care that they are down 30. Off balance shot, no good. And now we have some of the people in the game that normally don't get time. Gi Gianna Caruso was the one that missed that shot. Now up the floor, Christy Brennan against Taylor Howe, trying to go baseline, she goes underneath, off balance shot, no good, and a travel call before the shot went up. Also in the game for Kittatinny. Is uh, Number 31, who unfortunately we do not have a name on her at this point. Here's Gianna Caruso holding it. About 90 seconds to go here in this game. Oh, great pass inside to Taylor Howe, but stolen away by Christy Brennan. Brennan bringing it up, lost the ball as he tried to Euro step. Tried to get it through Olivia Lombardo, but couldn't. Pass inside to Gianna Caruso, got fouled, and got it to roll. That is the first point of Gianna Caruso's career. The freshman getting it done, and she has a chance to convert the and one. No good, though it was a one and one. She gets it right back and puts it in off the glass. How about that? Gianna Caruso 100% from the field to start her career. And a timeout called. It is 54 to 23, a minute and one seconds to go here in this game which has been an absolute shellacking in favor of the Kittatinny Cougars. 
they will go to nine and two on, or, sorry, 10 and two on the year and bounce back from that loss they had the other night against North Warren, 40 to 29. Mapakong allows 41, 41 points on average per game. Kittatinny scores 39 points on average per game. Both of those, for better or for worse, depending on who you're rooting for, being shattered. Christy Brennan stays in the game despite a full side change. And there's a block by Taylor Howe. Put back a tip there, no good by Angela Zamito, the junior. And possession will stay with Hapakon. Inbound into Christy Brennan. They are still doing hard defense on her despite the game being out of question. Christy Brennan turns on the Jets, tried to go baseline and throws it off. Threw it off of Olivia Lombardo, so possession will stay with the Chiefs. <laughs> hey, the people saying you got to watch out for Caruso in the paint. I wouldn't put anything past her. Inbound, tipped away, and on the ground it is, and the ball rolled out of bounds before anyone could get possession. I wish we had instant replay. Well, we do have instant replay on more Sussex Sports. But uh, for the game, referee-wise, I'm not sure. That would be cool, though. Perhaps a bit unnecessary, depending on who you ask. And the shot is no good off a block again. Gianna Caruso making most of her limited minutes in this game. Another inbound coming. That one was tipped as well, but a Pat Khan will keep it. Double team. And a Fata Russo takes the shot, no good. And now here's Angela Zamino. That ball was poked out of there by Olivia Lombardo. And folks, you're not seeing a replay. This just keeps happening. And the bounce in. And again, <laughs> our, pro our producer's like, really, again? Yes, again, 6.2 seconds. How many seconds have come off the clock on just tips out of bounds alone on this possession? There's never been a change of possession. And there's a change of possession. Stolen away by Taylor Howe. And the shot at the buzzer is no good, but it doesn't matter. Kid a titty. 54 to 23, the most perfect game you could have played on either side of the ball against this Apac Kong team. Christy Brennan came into this game most significantly out of all the things that they did tonight defensively. Christy Brennan came into this game averaging 26 points a game. She needed 23 to break the all-time scoring record held by her coach, Jamie Douglas. Only got 10. Incredible job on all facets by Kittatinny. And when we come back, we are gonna have an interview with the two players of the game for Kittatinny, that is Maddie Beyer, Michaela Caruso, and we're gonna have an interview, of course, with the number one fan of Kittatinny Sports, Brandon Bort. That's all coming up right after this break, live on more Sussex Sports. Hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast, it's worth the wait. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or a refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda at loandepot.com. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. 
Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, it helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. Our goal at Reiner Pump Systems has been to provide customers with the best quality pumps and packaged pump systems that have solved their water and wastewater problems. We have been successful at satisfying our customers through honesty, hard work, engineering, fair prices, and outstanding customer service. Our greatest asset are the people dedicated to make Reiner Pump Systems a leader in the water and wastewater marketplace. Reiner Pump Systems started in 1998 as a family-owned business and has grown into one of the most respected pump sales force in the Northeast and now Pacific Northwest. Our success has been nothing short of amazing. We are now considered by most the go-to pump house for replacement pumps, big and small. Reiner Pump Systems. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. If you've ever been around bad leadership, you know it right away. Find out what it takes to be a great leader in the book, Don't Wait, Lead Now by Jim Lord. Filled with real world experiences and lessons that you can easily apply to your own situation, Don't Wait, Lead Now will help you become a more effective leader, whether in business, family, or life in general. Start your leadership journey and reach your full potential. Learn more and order at don'twaitleadnow.com. That's don'twaitleadnow.com.
Are you interested in a career in the STEM field? Then look to Sussex County Community College for high-tech programs in optics, robotics, engineering, machine tools, and more. Sussex provides a cross-disciplinary approach where students work closely with professors to ensure they get the best hands-on experience. The STEM industry is constantly evolving, so join this competitive industry and advance your STEM education today. Pursue your degree at Sussex County Community College by visiting sussex.edu slash apply. If you're Hi everybody, welcome back to Kittatinny Regional High School. Kittatinny dominates a PacCon winning 54 to 20. Oh. Hey, the mic wasn't on. Hi. Uh, welcome back to Kittatinny Regional High School. Ryan Sudall here. Kittatinny dominates a Pat Kong and girls basketball action 54 to 23. And we have the two high scorers with us right now. First off, the high score tonight with 17 points, Michaela Caruso. And also going along with that, Lord knows how many blocks you had. You were a force in the paint the entire game. What was the key to your success? Um, I think just being patient on D and letting her drive without making contact, waiting to swat the ball. It seemed like every single time that you got the ball, I'm sorry, that, that the ball was near you, you made contact with it. Uh, what was what did you work on in practice this week with the team to really like get that down? And uh, of course, all the, over the course of the season, because you had 30 blocks coming into this game. Um, our main focus this week was definitely rebounding, just mate boxing out and rebounding and grabbing all those loose balls. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And of thank course, we got you. the second high scorer here, Maddie Byer. And you want to yeah, switch over? There we go. <laughs> Matty Barr, you had 14 points tonight, second high scorer, and you led the defensive core that clamped down on Christy Brennan, who it was the, is the X factor for a Pat Kong that every team talks about when you face her. What was the key to, to clamping her down? Um, just to have trust in your teammates, because you know if you get beat, they'll step up and then you help them. So if you just give it your all when you're on her, you know that, if, yep. <laughs> so my final, don't worry about it. So for my so last question, this is actually for both of you guys. You guys start uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, Hundred and Warren Sussex tournament uh, next week. You're either going to face uh, Belvedere or Sussex Tech. What do you think this game did tonight in terms of your confidence going into that tournament? Start with you, Matt. It definitely boosted our confidence. We came off a tough loss to North Warren on Wednesday, and hopefully by then we'll have Riley back. She's very important to us. Um, it 100% boosted our confidence. We got to run a lot during this game and just play our game and have fun. So That's what it's all about. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we have another guy over here. We want to get in here. Come on over here. He's taking off the jacket. He's ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brandon, the number one fan of Kittatinny Sports. He was making noise all game long. You want to come up here, please? So... I'm just going to give you the mic. What are your thoughts on tonight's game? Uh, Kittatinny girls did really good today. They played ball moving. They played a really good game. Uh, they won 54-23. I'm happy Josh Reed really good today. And uh, hopefully they beat South Harden the next week. And uh, hopefully they do good with Maddie, Evel girls, and Caruso do good. Everybody do good. And uh, – I'm so happy I'm the second person to be the number one fan of the football game I went to, and we won that too, 2019 over Newton last year, two years ago. And uh, girls play really good, and hopefully they play good and far hard, and hopefully maybe they win the division maybe. Uh, hopefully maybe win the states maybe, maybe conference maybe. That'd be tough. We'll see. And... Uh, Best of luck all the girls this year, and hopefully they win a division again maybe this year. I don't know, but it'd be tough. But uh, we'll see what happens this year. And go Cougars, everybody. And everybody say, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much for your time. Day. Feed me more, everybody. Feed me more. Got fed a lot tonight. 54-23, to 23, your final score. Kittatinny over Hapak Kong. I'm Ryan Sudol saying good night and stay safe.